How you start your tomato plants determines the strength of the plant and ultimately the production you're going to get out of it. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to start your tomato seeds so you end up with the strongest plants possible and a huge harvest. Stick around. Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help you take your tomato growing to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. So tomato plants can be started indoors six to eight weeks before your average last frost date. And they can be planted out in the garden uh, about two to three weeks after your average last frost date. You wanna make sure nighttime temperatures are at least in the 50s before setting them out. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite variety of tomato is. Mine is Kellogg's Breakfast and also Sun Gold. Yes, I love my yellow tomatoes. But this year, I'm actually going to be growing a lot of Amish paste tomatoes as well for lots and lots of sauce to preserve for the winter. First, let's talk about what I start my tomato seeds in. Basically, repurposed Red Solo cups. I've used these same cups for at least three years, and they have many more years ahead of them. Now, you want to make sure you put drainage in them. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can either take a drill with a bit and carefully drill through several cups at a time. One quarter inch hole in the bottom is actually enough. Or you can make smaller holes with um, either a soldering iron. That's what someone said. I'd, I'd be aware of the fumes though. Be outside in good ventilation. Um, or you can heat a nail over a candle and poke them right through that way. Uh, with that, you'd probably want to put two or three, maybe four holes in the bottom of each cup. The point is you need to have drainage in the bottom of your cups. Now you can use any other type of container as well, as long as it is taller rather than wide. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So going back to what I said earlier about getting your plants off to the best start possible in order to have the biggest harvest possible, it all starts right when we plant the seeds and how those are grown. You want good root systems very early on to make robust plants to set out in the garden so they just get off to a start. As soon as you put them out, they're off and running. So we're gonna take advantage of a little talent that tomatoes have that most other crops do not. And that is the fact that tomatoes can grow roots all along their stem. Anywhere their stem comes in contact with soil, moist soil, it's going to put out roots. So how do we take advantage of that to get the strongest uh, plant possible. And strongest plant doesn't necessarily just mean a great harvest. It also means less pests and disease issues. So we want to make them really, really strong. And this method works both for indeterminate tomato plants and determinate tomato plants. Quick rundown on what those two mean. A determinate plant is something like a Roma tomato. It grows maybe four feet tall, produces all of its fruit, is harvested, and then it's done. An indeterminate plant, which includes most of the tomatoes you're gonna grow, will grow and grow and grow kind of like a vine, and it will keep growing as long as your season is until the frost comes to kill it. In places where you don't have a frost or very mild frost, that tomato can grow right through the winter. And the whole time it's growing, it's producing fruit. Okay, so let's get going here. So in my solo cups, I'm gonna add about two inches of potting soil, two to three inches, about a third of the depth of the cup. And you wanna make sure that your potting soil is pre-moistened. It should have the feel of a wrung out sponge, not just pouring water when you squeeze it, but a few drips will come out and it just kind of just kind of stays together in a little ball. Again, you want to use indoor potting mix because that is going to give you the uh, most sterile medium to grow in. Uh, it's going to keep things away like fungus gnats and damping off issues, fungus issues. So two inches of potting mix, and then we're going to add two tomato seeds per cup. Now that's going to give us insurance policy in case one doesn't sprout, the other one most likely will. We're going to push them down about an eighth of an inch and I'm trying something new this year. I'm actually covering all of my seeds, instead of with some more potting mix, I'm, going, I'm covering them with vermiculite. 
Now you, you can or don't have to do this, but definitely watch the progress of this because I've heard a lot of great things about it. it. It keeps away the damping off and the fungal issues and it also cuts down on fungus gnats. So that's the claims anyway. I will let you know uh, as the season progresses if that in fact was the case. So either just cover it with about an eighth of an inch of potting soil or a very thin layer of vermiculite. And I always suggest to experiment with things like this in your own garden. It's always nice to find new ways of doing things that just bump the level of success up a little bit and find ways that work best for you in your particular garden. Now, if both seeds do germinate, you wanna wait, don't do anything about it until they get their first set of true leaves. The first leaves that come out are their seed leaves and they're gonna look a little bit different than normal tomato leaves. And then that second set that comes out, that's their first true leaves. And those will just look like miniature tomato leaves. At that point, you have a decision to make. You can either just snip off the weaker looking stem, um, or you can tease both of them out of the potting soil and then plant them in their own separate cups. By the way, if you're getting something out of this video, please hit the thumbs up button um, and leave a comment. That will help YouTube know that this video has something to offer and that other people might be interested as well and help push it out to a wider audience and help support my channel. I'd appreciate it. If you really want to support our channel, share this on some of your social media. So once they have their first set of true leaves, you can start to fertilize them. The seed has everything it needs up until that point, and then it will gather a little bit from some of the nutrients that are in the potting mix. But after about two weeks or so, once they have those first true leaves, they do need some assistance. Now you can use any type of organic liquid fertilizer that's pretty much all purpose. It's got a good uh, mix of the three numbers, the NPK. Um, I use Neptune's Harvest, um, fish and seaweed formula. It's a nice organic all purpose fertilizer that will not burn your plants. We have a next level viewer discount I'm going to put a link down below. When you click that link and go to Neptune's Harvest, it gives you an automatic discount and free shipping in the United States. Once you have all of your seeds sown, you want to put them into a tray that you can water in. Tomatoes benefit from bottom watering. They don't like their leaves to be wet. That invites fungal disease. So if you can fill up the tray and put these cups in there and let them soak the water up from the bottom, that's the best way to do it. If you want to have a set it and forget it type of experience, make sure you put either some plastic wrap over the top of the containers or a humidity dome. And what that does is keeps that moisture inside so you don't have to constantly water these uh, seedlings until they're up. Once they're up, or at least 50% of them have germinated, remove that plastic from the top. That plastic will just hold in moisture at that point and invite those fungal diseases. If you want to cut your germination time in half, you're going to want to get a seed mat, preferably with a thermostat, and set it at 75 degrees. Now, see, uh, tomatoes usually take between 7 and 10 days to germinate. I've had mine come up in 4 days with a heat mat. They're relatively inexpensive. I have links on my website to the brands that I use under products I love. I'll put that link down below in the description. Okay, let's talk sunlight. Now, it's okay if the temperatures at night do not fall below 55 to go ahead and put the tomatoes outside to germinate in full sun. If we're talking maybe five to 10 degrees below that at night, you can start them in a cold frame. I'll link a video that I just did uh, on building a cold frame and how to grow in a cold frame or start seeds in a cold frame. If not, and you have a good amount of time before you reach those nighttime temperatures, you're going to need to start them indoors. And a sunny window just won't do unless you've got six to eight hours of direct sun in that window. So I'm not there yet, and my cold frame is full. Um, tomatoes also like more heat than that, and I want to get them off to a quick start. So I'm going to be growing them inside under one of my Viper Spectra grow lights. And these are great because they are a full spectrum LED light. They are cool running. They don't waste a lot of energy. And they're great because you can control the light with the dimmer knob. And I find that 24 inches under the light set at about 50% works really well. 
If this type of grow light is a little bit outside of your budget right now, I have a uh, video that I can link down below, a grow light for every budget. And we're talking all the way down to like $10 and then up. Now, if you're using anything other than a professional grow light like the Viper Spectra, you wanna make sure that your leaves of your plants are no further than two to three inches away from the actual light source. Other types of lights just aren't strong enough to have that distance um, away from that light. And you wanna leave your grow lights on for 16 hours a day and off for eight. Now, electricity, at least where I live, is cheaper at night. So my grow lights run throughout the night rather than in the daylight hours. Okay, fast forward a few weeks when your plants look like this. Uh, and now you might be wondering why with a plant this tall, we only have two inches of potting soil in the bottom. Well, it goes back to tomatoes growing roots along their stem. Now, as this tomato grows, you're going to be adding more potting soil in. You don't have to wait till it is this big to add it in. You can do it as it grows, as long as there's you know still leaves out of the soil to photosynthesize. Now, you don't really have to do it but I like to pluck off the lower leaves before I bury that part of the stem. And you always want, you know, about this much growth on top. We could even take this one off here. So no less than that on top. And then we're going to fill it up all the way around the stem with pre-moistened potty mix. The same mix you used when you sowed the seeds the first time. Don't do this with any other type of seedling, it will kill it. Again, tomatoes just are the pretty much the only ones that have the talent of growing new roots now around the stem. So fast forward a couple more weeks when you're ready to put this out in the garden, this whole cup is going to be full of roots coming off that main stem. And then make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell because I'm gonna be doing a video because there are more things we can do to keep the momentum going and to fly into a full season of huge production with tomatoes. And I'm gonna be going through that on some future videos. As always, thank you for watching. If you learned something, give the video a thumbs up, comment down below, share on social media. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing that. I'll see you next time.